Oh boy, is that time again. Bad creepypasta time. I am enjoying this series so far, and I'm glad you guys are as well. I really do enjoy giving constructive criticism and help when I can. The series isn't all destructive, it's constructive as well. That's one main reason why I enjoy doing this series. So, without further ado, let's check the bad creepypasta tip jar and see what we can pull out of this. Oh! Souls, a Super Smash Brothers creepypasta. So, without any further ado, let's dive right into this. I finally returned from college for my winter break. I've been away for a long time and it was really nice seeing everyone, but I found myself alone even when I come back for a little while. As I unloaded my things from my car and carrying them to my room in the basement, I found my old Nintendo 64 console in my closet. Awesome! I haven't played the system in well over 10 years. As I unpacked my things, I quickly started getting the system up and found my old Star Fox NFL QB Club 2001, NASCAR 1999, Yoshi Story, and many other games that I grew up on. I was so excited about the long and amazing journey while playing these games. The first game that I grabbed was Star Fox. I blew the bottom of the cartridge and slammed it into the system. Okay, break here. I hate it when people say, I slam this into the system. It's, it's a nitpick, but it leaves a funny thought in my mind. Like a rather cartoony one of someone just violently shoving a cartridge into their console or slamming a disc into a DVD player or whatever. It, it just comes off as goofy. Again, that might just be me, and I do apologize if it sounds a little too nitpicky, but let's continue. I flipped the switch into the on position, but nothing happened. No sponsors, no sounds, just a black screen. I looked down at the system, which had the little light on telling me it was working. I flipped the system off and sat in confusion. It should work, I thought, though it has been sitting for some time. Without thought, I started checking the console, controller, cores, and the system itself. All seemed fine until I finally figured out the cord used for the audio and display and the cord to the controller has given up, mostly because a pet chewed the wires and they were both crudely fixed with electrical tape. I took a deep breath and silently cursed at myself for not fixing it back then. In frustration, I tossed the controller on the ground and grabbed my Game Boy and played some Pokemon. The next day, I started driving around and came across a small game shop off the belt of our small town. Curiosity got a hold of me and I barked in front of it. I walked inside and saw I had hundreds of movies and games that went to the newest game consoles to the SNES. I felt like a little kid looking at all the games. But then I came across one of my favorites, Super Smash Brothers. I immediately grabbed the game and smiled like an idiot. I'm sure most people near me looked in concern when it came to me. I didn't really care. The game in general was in pretty good condition, with a few scratches here and there, but Mario's eyes blackened out with what seemed like a permanent marker. Hmm, little punk, I thought as I looked at the game. I get I'm not the best at taking care of games, but don't mark them up. I shrugged it off and placed it on the counter with the corded controller and paid for them. As I made it to my room, I placed the controller and started setting the system up once more. You placed the controller where? Well, did you place it into the console or on the floor or on a counter or on your bed? Where did you place your controller? Sit tight, ladies and gentlemen. It's about to get better. Just bear with me here. Cords were in the right place and a good controller was plugged in. I picked up Star Fox once more and presto! The game started up smoothly and I played for hours. When I finished the game, I grabbed the Super Smash Bros. game and looked at the label again, wondering why Mario's eyes were drawn over. Maybe this is a bad game? I thought, well, they wouldn't sell me a bad game, would they? I took a deep breathe, I slid the game in and turned it on. You're, you're, you, okay, your grammar was pretty good up until this point right here. I can only see one other error, that being, you know, you forgot to mention where you place your controller. That was enough to throw me off. I almost didn't do that the first take. Anyways, let's continue. I took a deep breath and slid the game in and turned it on. It worked! I was happy to see the Nintendo 64 logo and the opening animation run smoothly, but there was no sound. No music or character sounds as they were introduced. 
I checked my TV, but it was working fine. I started getting angry until a loud screech from my TV sent shivers down my spine. I'm no fan of loud and high-pitched noises because they da 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 hurt my ears. No shit, Sherlock. I'm no fan of loud and high-pitched noises because they hurt my ears, but that was one of the worst I heard. I skipped the intro to the main screen and was given all my options. One player, versus mode, etc. But there was no music still. I selected the one player mode and was greeted by all the regular eight characters. Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, Samus, Yoshi, Kirby, Fox, and Pikachu. But they all look different. Their eyes were all black. Some of them were harder to tell like Pikachu and Kirby, but they had no whites in their eyes and instead of hearing, select your character, I heard, next to die, in a deep, low voice. Next to die, I thought. I started to believe the game had been messed with in some way, but I went along with it and selected my favorite character, Pikachu. I wanted to go on an easier level so I could warm up, but there wasn't any option at all. I only had the stock level, but I could only have one life. Yeah, this has been messed with, I mumbled, taking a deep breath and pressing the start button. The voice announced, Pikachu versus Link! But it was just the voice and no dramatic sounds that normally happen, and their eyes were the same as they were on the character selection. The level loaded up and Hyrule Castle looked fine, but there wasn't a background or music playing. It didn't show a mountain and valley, but was just a dark red. As the announcer yelled, Go! Link and I fought, and I quickly defeated him, but as he fell off the map I heard Link cry out as a bone-crunching splat drowned him out. Instead of the explosion and the text, FINISH! appeared. The splat sounded so real it sent chill down my spine. <laughs> it sent one whole chill down my spine. Finished? What does that mean? I thought as the next level came up. Pikachu vs. Yoshi Team. Under in the black part of the screen it had a text saying 25 Yoshi Massacre. I did a double take on that text, but it disappeared as Yoshi's Island loaded. Again, no music in a dark red background, but with a very faint outline of something else in a lighter red. The announced, go, once again. The first paragraph was so good. The first paragraph of this story was so good. Then it just kind of dwindled down, like, what? Please proofread your stuff before you post it. Even for my fucking shitty troll pastas that I do, like, Cars, the lost beta film, or the lost 90s commercials. I proofread them before I post them. It doesn't matter how little regard you have for whatever you do, you want to make sure you want to do it 110%. Because you don't want to put up something that's half assed on the internet because people are going to laugh at it. And they could bring you into it. That's the one thing I don't do. I don't bring the writer into all this. Okay, I'm criticizing the work, not the writer. The announced go once again, and I started knocking the Yoshis off the map easily with the same nasty splat every time they died. I don't think plurals have the apostrophe S, I think it's just an S. I gagged halfway through, wait what? Your character must have a really light stomach. Because if so, they can't watch any cartoons or movies with that kind of shit in it. I can't watch any nasty Spongebob episodes. Number one, mean-spirited and immature. Hint, hint at another future video. You probably know who I'm talking about. Number two, whenever I hear a splat, I toss my fucking cookies. All right? And then I gotta go clean it up. I don't want to do that. Anyway, back to the story. I gagged halfway through, and with the last Yoshi dead, the text finished appeared. I swallowed some spit that formed in my mouth as the next level, Fox, started, but there was a large red text below saying, 
having fun. Before I could question it, the Sector Z map loaded and both characters entered. No music and the same background, but the outline started to become a little clearer through the darker red. After I defeated Fox and heard his death, I was expecting the target bonus round, but it skipped it and went straight to the Mario Brothers. The music was still missing and the red outline started to become more visible. I was given Kirby as a partner, but he was quickly defeated. As I beat both the Mario Brothers, I sat back and noticed I was shaking slightly. Whoa! 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 You know, I wouldn't write my character as an absolute wimp like this. This just comes off as absolutely cartoonish and unrealistic. Uh, what are you afraid of? Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I played this really bone-chilling ROM hack last week of Super Smash Brothers. Oh, my hands are shaking just thinking about it. The next person to fight was Pikachu, and under Pikachu vs. Pikachu, her red text said, You're killing them all. I'm killing them? I thought as the level loaded. What does that mean? The map was still music-less, and the lighter red was visible. It showed a ghost-like face with sharp teeth that curved into a smile. As I moved through the levels, Giant Donkey Kong, the Kirby team, and Samus, the face in the background became clearer and clearer with each fight as text appeared before certain fights ended. After the Kirby fight, the text said, They tried so hard to live, but you kept them from that. And after the Samus fight, it said, Their souls are mine now. Uh, I started to think what all this meant, and then the Metal Mario fight came. The brave heroes will finally gave up to me. Mario gave up? Why did he give up? I started to think about all that's been happening. But the level loaded and the fight was as difficult as it always was. Finally, after beating Metal Mario, more text appeared. Thank you for building my army. They fought hard, but all died by your hand. And now they are mine. The Polygon team? What was it talking about? The thought slipped into my mind. What if all the characters that I defeat are turned into the figures that I'm going to face? That would mean they were turned into these polygon figures and forced to fight me again. I was stunned at this idea. The fight started, but the background was different. It wasn't red, but completely black, and the music was back, but it sounded like it was being played backwards. Oh! Oh, mwah, be bellissimo cliché, a bellissimo, beautiful cliché. Backwards of music, eh? <laughs> Pop open the champagne, boys. We got ourselves a nice cliché over here. Oh, dude, you know, I was listening to some video game music, right? And it, it started playing backwards, and then I looked down at my pants, and there was like a big old log of shit there, man. What peeves me most is there is a comment here that says, Uh, uh, hardly any cliché in it. Hardly any cliché in it. Just because it doesn't have hyper-realistic blood in it, doesn't mean it's not cliché. You can't look at this backwards music bullshit and say, Oh, no, hardly any cliché. No cliché here. A big old log of shit. As I fought, I felt a wave of sadness crash down on me every time a figure fell off the map and a metallic crunch sounded in place of the explosion. I sent every single one of those characters to their deaths and they got turned into those th things. It hit me like a bag of bricks, but the final boss was approaching. Another text appeared. Now we meet in person. Master Hand, he did all of this. This little string of zeros and ones was responsible for turning 
eight other strings of zeros and ones into completely different strings of zeros and ones that are forced to fight me again. Ah! I felt anger build up inside me as the level loaded. It started normally, Pikachu standing alone on the bottom, but the background was still completely black and the music was playing backwards. Master Hand appeared like normal, but various parts of him were covered in red. How much you want to bet it was... Oh, blood! <laughs> How much you want to bet it was blood? Uh, no, he was just eating some McDonald's before the fight and got ketchup on his hand. Obviously. <laughs> oh, go fuck yourself. His laugh was lower and more evil and thus started the fight. It seemed to have lasted to what seemed like forever. It seemed to have lasted to what seemed like forever and proved to be as difficult as I remember. The music played louder and faster as Master Hand's health dropped. As I finally landed the last hit, Master Hand started to explode and everything, but Pikachu went to black. I let out a satisfied sigh and waited for the credits, but they didn't show. But what did show will haunt my mind for the rest of my days. It was a picture of all of the characters, their faces sad or incredibly scared, with Master Hand above them, his fingers extended out. A final text appeared below them before it faded to black. Thanks for my new toy. Okay, review time, even though I pretty much already did that, breaking from the pasta several times. But I'll compile all of my complaints and put them into this segment. The pasta started out pretty good. A pretty good build-up. The first two paragraphs have no grammatical errors whatsoever that I can find. But once it kicks into the segment where our protagonist is playing the game, it's like fucking Oprah Winfrey is giving out grammatical errors. You get a grammatical error, and you get a grammatical error. Everybody gets a grammatical error. Holy fucking shit. Not, not if this is scary. It's just bland. Just bland as all hell. Not to mention the whole segment where our protagonist is actually playing the game is just one big ass wall of text. Other than it being bland in a wall of text and... The sentence, I took a deep breath, I slid the game in and turn it on. I'm surprised I said that in one take again. That That's a fucking mess. It, it's a fucking mess. You need to fix that shit, you need to fix it too. I took a deep breath, then slid the game in and turned it on. Okay, that out of the way. Now that I've gone on and bitched about the grammatical errors, let's talk about the contents of this cartridge itself. It's bland. It's grounded too much in the reality of ROM hacking. Our protagonist even says, yeah, this is this has been tampered with. But pretty much almost everything that is happening inside of this cartridge could easily be ROM hacked. If it came down to someone with some easy ROM hacking experience, they could do this in a cinch. Now, the cliches. You know, you got the, oh, hyper-realistic bone crunching splats. There was music later on, but it was playing in reverse. I think that right there, the backwards music, is a trope that Ben Drowned popularized a lot. It's become just a big, fat cliche. And if I was some casual reader just reading this just because of bored or whatever, once I see being played in reverse, I'll, I'll back out and go look at something else. Because if you're resorting to something as cheap of a cliche as backwards music, it's probably not going to get any better. All right, final thing, the protagonist. The protagonist is a wimp. The protagonist is like cartoonishly wimpy. Ugh, yeah, you know, when I heard those bone splats, I really wanted to throw up, I legit did. And when I started theorizing of what all this could mean, I started shaking, I was like quivering. It was absolutely horrible. I, I, w I wouldn't play this again for my life. I think even the cowardly lion would be braver than our protagonist here. That's, that's pretty much it. Overall, it's pretty tame, definitely far from the worst that we've reviewed here on Bad Creepypasta. 
I think if the pastas we've reviewed here are all bad creepy pastas so far were compared to hot sauces, this sits around about maybe Tabasco sauce, while something like Wizard of Oz 1936 version is easily like fucking Blair 16 million reserve <laughs> fucking 16 million Scoville units. That's, that's the spiciest pasta I've ever read. So I give this pasta a Tabasco sauce out of Blair 16 million reserve. Not that bad, but stinky enough of a shit to be featured on this series. Anyways, that about wraps up this episode of Bad Creepy Pasta. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already for more Bad Creepy Pasta, and uh, stay tuned, we have more stinkers coming your way. I love you all very much, and take it easy. <laughs>